Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to the first Rust WebAssembly tutorial for my channel. Today we're going to be building something fairly basic, just to show you guys the basic developer pipeline for working with WebAssembly and Rust using the WebAssembly BindGen library. All right, so to get started, we want to add the Wasm32 unknown unknown target to our Rust up compiler. So we just call Rust up target add, and then we add Wasm32 dash unknown dash unknown. Once we've done that, we need to install the WebAssembly bindgen command line tool. And we can do this by running this command here. Now notice that we specifically are telling it to run this on the nightly branch of Rust using this small little piece here. So if you're watching this video and you do not already have the Rust nightly branch installed and activated, make sure to do that beforehand because otherwise you won't be able to build any WebAssembly in your projects. So we're just creating a library which we then compile into WebAssembly and then we can actually access this WebAssembly library after running it through the Wasm bindgen command as if we were accessing a normal JavaScript module. We're running on the nightly branch and we're creating a new Rust library project called Wasm example. Once we've done that, of course, we can open up the project inside of the text editor of our choice. And in this case, I'm opening it up inside of Visual Studio Code. We've got a source folder with a lib.rs inside of it. And then, of course, we have our cargo toml file. Now, there are two edits that we need to make to the cargo toml file to make this work properly. We need to tell the compiler that we're using a crate type called cdy lib by creating this new lib section. By doing this, we're telling the compiler, okay, we want this to be a specific type of library. Then, of course, we need to bring in the Wasm bindgen library, and I'm using the latest version at this recording, which is 0.2.11. After you've made those edits to your cargo toml file, you can simply run cargo build to get all of the dependencies and build out the boilerplate application that was generated by cargo. All right, so now let's actually get into the actual code for our application. So inside of our lib.rs file, we have all of this boilerplate and we just want to remove it. Once we've done that, we need to actually set up the file so that it can properly be compiled into WebAssembly. So first we need to add a set of feature attributes to the top of our file. And by doing this, we'll get a bunch of features that we can use inside of this code. So the features that we want are proc macros, wasm custom section, and wasm import module. And then, of course, we want to bring in the external crate for the Wasm Bindgen library. And we want to use the core of this library, which is inside of the prelude module. And we can just import all of that stuff with a glob import like this. Now our application is going to have two main points inside of it. We're going to have this extern block and then we're going to have a block below it. Now the extern block allows us to define a bunch of function and object definitions of items that exist inside of the JavaScript that we're interfacing with. Say we wanted to use the alert function from JavaScript inside of our Rust code, we would just add alert inside of this extern block, and then we could use it like any other Rust function. So here, I've created the alert function, and you can see the alert function just takes in a slice of string, and it outputs nothing, and that's because it just pops up a box now down here in the second part of our application, we can call this alert function inside of a native Rust function. And this will be a function that we can then call from the JavaScript itself. So here I've created a function called runAlert. And runAlert takes in a slice of string. 
which we can send in from the JavaScript layer, and then it applies it to whatever we want inside of the function body. So if we want to create this alert and have it work properly, we can do it like this. So we call the alert function, and then because we need to create a slice of string, and we want to be able to have a part of the string be from the Rust code and a part of the string be from the JavaScript code, we can use the format macro and specifically we can reference the actual item that comes from the format macro which will make it into a reference to a slice of string. And here we can just write in this is wasm and and then we can put in a little placeholder which will take in the item string which we pass in from the JavaScript. So this is very basic stuff here. All we're really doing is defining this alert function and its types inside of this extern block so that the compiler will create some connections or shims between this function declaration and the actual function itself that exists inside of the JavaScript virtual machine. And then we're also creating a native function which will go into our WASM module, which we'll then have access to from our JavaScript. All right, so now let's take this a little further. So we have this run alert function function, which just will pop up a alert box. Let's make something that actually manipulates the DOM and adds a few HTML elements to our HTML document. To get started with this, we want to define two types, and these types will correspond with types that exist inside of our JavaScript virtual machine. So we have the HTML document type, and then we have the element type. The HTML document type is like the actual document itself. So if you're in JavaScript and you call, say, document dot get element, you're actually calling on the entire object which is the reference to the actual document. So now down here, we can actually create a reference to that document variable by just saying static document type of HTML document. And this will then allow us to access methods like create element, like body, like append child, for instance. Let's start with the create element method. So here we have to first add a declarative macro to tell the compiler that this is indeed a method. So we're just saying wasm bind gen. Then we open up some parentheses and we write in method. We define the actual method type annotation. So this method gets called on a reference to an HTML document, and then we pass in the tag name that we want to create, and it outputs an element type. So now down here, we can access this create element function inside of this newly created create stuff function. So the create stuff function is the native Rust function that we're writing, and it takes in nothing, and it also outputs nothing, so it's just void. And down here, we can create any HTML element that we want. So inside of create stuff, I've created a div HTML element and a P tag, which we can then add text to by importing the inner HTML property. So we have this static document object, which is our HTML document type here, and we want to actually be able to get the body of this document. So we'll create a function called body, and you can see here we define a declarative macro up here, which defines this as a method for a reference to HTML document, and it defines the method as a getter method, which means that it doesn't take in anything other than the object itself, and it returns something. So we just call this on our document object, and it returns the root element of the document object. We want to be able to append our HTML elements to the actual document, so we'll bring in the append child 
function. And of course, we can call these functions anything we want, as long as we tell the compiler that we're calling them something else. We have a property that says js underscore name, and we're telling the compiler that this function's name is append child, even though the function that we're defining here is named append. Also, again, we have to define that this is a method because we're going to call it on an element. And so we call it on an element and then we pass in another element which we want to append to that first element. Now we can kind of bring together all of the ideas that we've been sort of playing with thus far by creating a inner HTML setter function called set inner. You can see here in the declarative macro, we're defining this as a method as it is, but it's also a setter. So rather than writing the JS underscore name property, we can just say setter equals, and then we can pass in the name of the JavaScript function that we want this to correspond to. So this is a setter, which is called inner HTML. And in JavaScript, since it's a setter, you can just call it on the object and then have an equal sign and then pass in whatever it is that you want to set into this property. Inside of Rust, however, we want to call this on the reference for our element, and then we just want to to pass in a reference to our slice of string. So this will then allow us to put a string into the inner HTML of any of our elements. So now let's actually apply the functions that we just created. So we want to put some text inside of the p tag. So we call the set inner method on the p tag object. And then we pass in a slice of string, which we can just pass in hello from Wasm in Rust. Then we can append our p tag to our div by calling div.append and passing in p. And then we can get our document body and append the div, which has the p attached to it, to the actual HTML document. All right, so now that we've finished creating our application, we can actually build it for WebAssembly. So we just call cargo, and we want this to be on the nightly branch, and then we call build, and then we need to specifically tell it that we want to target the Wasm32 unknown compiler, which we added earlier. You'll notice inside of the target folder that you have this Wasm32 folder, and then inside of it and under debug, you have a wasm file named after the project name. So this is wasm underscore example dot wasm. And if I want, I can open it up. And you can see that WebAssembly looks quite a bit like a Lisp of sorts, which makes a lot of sense. But it's quite a big file and it's kind of difficult to read, so I'm not really going to get into it. And the WebAssembly file that was generated just now is an unoptimized WebAssembly file. So it's fairly large and unwieldy, and it's not as performant as it could be. And we can fix this by applying the bindgen CLI to it, which will then generate a much more efficient version of this WebAssembly file. To actually apply Wasm bindgen to the new WebAssembly file that we created, we just want to call wasm-bindgen, and then we need to input the input file first. So we input the path to that file, which is target wasm32-unknown-unknown, debug, and then the file name. And then we need to specify the alt directory, which is just our root directory. So we just put in a dot. Once this finishes, you'll notice that we have now a new Wasm file inside of the root directory, and we also have a TypeScript file and a JavaScript file. Inside of the TypeScript file, we have the two native functions that we defined inside of our Rust library, run alert and create stuff. And you can see we have the type annotations for both of these functions. The first one just takes in a string and it outputs nothing. And the second one doesn't take in anything. And of course it's void as well. Inside of the JavaScript file, things are quite a bit more complicated. You can see we have quite a lot of stuff in here. And essentially this file just works to glue together the WebAssembly and the other JavaScript file which we're about to create. All right, so now in the root of our application, let's create an index.js file. And what we can do inside of this file is just directly import our WebAssembly file. 
So we can just say const rust equals import dot backslash wasm underscore example. And then we can reference this rust variable like we would with any other JavaScript module. Because the rust module returns a promise, we can run the then method on it. And then we can pass in a closure, which takes in the return from this promise. And it allows us to then call the two functions which we created in our library. So here we're calling the create stuff function. And then we're calling the run alert function and passing in a string that says JavaScript. Now we need to create a package.json file so that we can use Webpack to pack up our WebAssembly and our JavaScript. and serve it to our actual browser. So we're going to bring in Webpack, Webpack CLI, and then the actual Webpack dev server. And you can see the versions for all of these modules inside of this file here. Also, we have a script which will automatically deploy our Webpack dev server. So we can just run yarn serve, and then this will execute the dev server itself. Now, of course, because we're using Webpack, we need to create a configuration file for it. So we'll just create a config file called webpack.config.js. And inside of it, we can add the bare minimum. So our entry point is our index.js. And then the output will be in a dist folder. And then the file name will be index.js as well. And then our mode will be development. And finally, we can create the HTML document that we want to run this script inside of. So here I've used Emmet to create this HTML document. And then I'm just going to add a title, just call this Rust Wasm Example. And I'm going to add a script tag, which will reference our index.javascript file. All right, so now we want to get the modules. And I'm running yarn install to do this. So this will grab Webpack, the CLI, and the dev server. And you can also use NPM, of course, if you prefer that as well. Then once we've gotten the modules, we can just run yarn serve. And this will then spin up a small little server, which will point towards localhost 8080 and serve out our index.html with our web assembly inside of it. So here's our application and you can see we've got this little alert box which pops open and says this is Wasm and JavaScript. And once we hit OK, it will bring us to the actual HTML which is being added from the Rust layer of our application. And it just says hello from Wasm in Rust. If we inspect it, you can see we have a div on the outside. And then, of course, we have our P on the inside with our text directly inside of it. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.